Welcome to Your Story with me, Mike Wexler. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to season two. My guest at this time is not only a professional wrestler in training, but not only that, but a coach and also a producer and filmmaker. This is Timothy Ray Brandon. <laughs> Welcome back to Your Story. My name is Mike, and today, like I mentioned before earlier in the video, my guest at this time, Timothy Ray Brandon. Tim, how are you? I'm good, Mike. How are you? Pretty good. I do appreciate you coming out here. Uh, we've known each other for a while, I think since November, so it's really cool to get a conversation with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you, you, uh, it, it's been a unique like meeting you through the pandemic and, and working on uh working on some stuff with you but yeah it's a, it's always a pleasure yeah and speaking about the pandemic i mean a lot of stuff i've kind of put it to a halt you know not a lot of people are doing uh we're doing uh, anything during the pandemic but you were able to manage to keep yourself busy during that so uh what was that kind of process like um it was difficult you know we trying to trying to film trying to coach uh football you know we had to follow a lot of a lot of guidelines you know keep everybody separate um they pushed our season back um that was normally supposed to you know be during normal football season they pushed it back to uh, spring so uh we had to adjust that and you know figure out um you know how to how to actually have a season with all the guidelines and, and the rules and stuff that they kept throwing at us and you know just the confusing rules and you know can't do this can't do that and it, it's like well we're, we're still playing football so i mean we like we can't we, we we have to make contact and stuff like that but uh you know with football trying to do that trying to still film um and figure out how we can have you know a good production we you know with crew and cast and stuff like that but still make sure that everybody's comfortable everybody's safe um and then of course like with wrestling it's the same thing like you know just trying to figure out how to do all this stuff that we, I think we took for granted, you know, a lot. And then it, everything just got taken away from us. Yeah, but I mean, as time progressed, I mean, obviously stuff are opening back up again. And um, we do know that you were a professional wrestler in training. Mm -hmm. uh, so what was it like, you know, training during the pandemic? Because I knew for a lot of people that was really, really, really hard. Yeah, it um, it was interesting, you know. Um, you, you know, obviously Jesse with the School of Hard Knocks, he... Uh, he took everything very very seriously so like we would we would take we would be taking breaks uh we you know get our temperature taken uh we'd have to spray with the uh the sprays and stuff like that and he, we would take breaks every once in a while make sure everybody's good you know nobody's breathing awkwardly or, or weird or any kind of symptoms you know um we would constantly with the hand sanitizer stuff like that and uh he kept the classes to a minimum you know it wasn't like some day you know pre-pandemic where it was like you know, we'd have 15, 20 uh, uh, students, I say kids, but students there, um, you know, he kept it real low, like four or five, maybe six at a time. And, and just to just to keep everything uh, uh, in low numbers. Yeah, I mean, it's good to keep those protocols in check, but also just pursuing your passion. And you've been doing that a lot throughout these past few years. Yeah, um, just trying to see, you know, uh, I guess knock everything off the bucket list. You know, I've I've got a lot of interest and in, and I've been lucky enough to be able to pursue them. Whether it's football, uh, wrestling, uh, acting, uh, directing, stuff like that. Um, I've I've had a, a a lot of support to just let me go and 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 not get the normal uh, nine to five job. You know, I, I've I've able I was I've been able to pursue a lot of stuff that I've been interested in since I was little. So, what made you have professional wrestling as a passion? Oh man. <laughs> since i was like three uh i think the first guy that caught my attention uh because i was young was uh the ultimate warrior you know with the the danglies and the, the the paint and everything and just how he ran around uh, and then as i got older uh i started appreciating um you know the, the more skilled you know uh not to talk bad about you know the warrior but you know <laughs> the more skilled guys like bret hart you know uh mr perfect owen hart stuff like that and uh, I was one of those kids in, in junior high and, you know, high school and stuff that, you know, me and my friends, we actually built uh, a ring in our backyard. I mean, it was, I, looking back on it now, I'm surprised none of us got hurt. It was just, it was plywood, a bunch of mattresses and, and just ropes. And I mean, we would we would beat the heck out of each other. I mean, no training, didn't know what we were doing, but we were like, hey, we're putting on shows, like we're doing good. And, and then eventually it just, you know, uh, everybody else kind of went and did their own thing and, and I just got, like stuck with it and just i, I want to try it i want to have a match i want to be like trained like correctly and uh that's that's where i'm at now well it's great to see how you came from the beginnings now 
Um, you know, you've done a lot when it comes to the professional wrestling business, but not only that, but your coaching, mm. you know, your filmmaking. I do want to talk about the coaching aspect first. Um, you know, you teach these young men um, within the sports to, you know, create better opportunities for themselves, but not only that, but better themselves. Mm -hmm. So, like, what was the inspiration for that? When I first started coaching, um, it was really just to be around football. You know, my my playing days ended uh, when I got cut in arena football. And the coach told me straight up, you know, hey, you're just like physically you're done. You're, you know, I'm 5'10", you know, 200 pounds. It, it, it is what it, I'm competing against uh, other quarterbacks that are like 6'3", 6 6'4". 6 and and uh, he's just like, hey, you, you, physically, you're, you, you know, you're probably you're probably done. Um, you can keep going, you know, never, never quit. But he's like mentally like, you know, the game in and out. So that's when I started looking into coaching and, and uh, went around to like youth football and stuff like that. And I, and I got hooked up in the high school and, and really just to be around football. And uh, I didn't realize at the time when I first started that, like how much of an impact and like how much of a joy it is to, to take, you know, a, a young kid who has never played, doesn't really understand the sport, teach them the sport and just see it click. Like there's so much joy in, in watching it click when they finally understand and not only just teaching them the game but teaching them like how how the sport helps them as you know work as as a team as a unit like as a family and um you know i may i make sure you know that that we're disciplined like they understand you know they're they're polite uh, uh, you know to their teachers outside of the field um i make sure that you know their grades are kept up because it's like you know football can end like that it's all the other stuff, you know, being polite, being, you know, working as a team, stuff like that. And I tell these kids all the time, like, you, if you want to go to college, use football to go to college. Mm -hmm. um, I tell them all the time, you, you play football to go to college, you don't go to college to play football. Right. And I try to tell, you know, make sure that they understand the difference of that, you know, and, and you want to use football to get that free education. You know, if, mm -hmm. if you're lucky enough, you know, to be one of the the 1% that move on and get paid for football, then that's great, but you got to make sure that you have everything lined up behind that so if it doesn't right. if it doesn't work out. And I use me as an example all the time. I mean, I I did everything I could to try and make it professionally and I'm like, look, I you know, I had a good youth career, I had a good high school career. I played semi pro and it it just, you know, it didn't pan out, you know, but uh I had other things to back up that that are working as well and you know and i would say 99 percent of the the kids that i do coach like they they get it they mm -hmm. they they understand um but yeah it's 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 like the passion from from just being around football and wanting to t like it, it's changed now to where it's like i i i love and enjoy so much when these kids come in and, and i get to teach them uh i'm the first person that they know that is teaching them the sport and right. so it's like I get to kind of mold them and help them understand, you know, why we do certain things. And I always encourage ask questions. You know, if there's mm -hmm. no if you don't know, ask. I'm like, you know, there's some coaches out there that get angry, like, well, why you should know. It's like, no, ask questions. I'm more than happy to tell you this is why we do this. Right. That way they understand. And when they when that when you see it in their eyes, that light bulb clicks like that's that's amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've always felt like when you're surrounded by passionate people and those that are willing to have the same goal as you. It's easier for you to ignite the passion that you already have and keep going forward. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, one of the things I did want to mention as well is the fact that you use this passion to, you know, uh, really go forward for whatever you're doing, whether that's through production, football, or professional wrestling. Uh, do you feel like it's sometimes a challenge sometimes when you're going through the hardships, whatever you're uh, going through, whether that's through filmmaking, coaching, or even wrestling? absolutely you know when uh when things aren't going your way it, it's it's challenging you know you 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 do sit there and like you know what am i doing wrong like you know or is this for me you know am i is this is this what i'm supposed to do um you know whether it's you know having a bad season in football you know not uh not progressing in training with wrestling and you know um or you know filmmaking you know like i can't get a location or or like you know at any process in the film like editing like i can't get this scene to work i can't get the actors to do what i you know um yeah that there's always challenges and stuff and and um you know i've i've been lucky enough to have people around me that 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 keep me from because uh, i'm one of those guys that if things don't right now right. then i'm like ah, whatever i'm done with this you know um 
Like I've been trying to learn guitar for like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's great to see what you're doing right now, especially within the stuff that you're passionate about. Um, so one of the final questions that I have for you is that, you know, uh, what advice do you have for anyone that's pursuing, wanting a passion or wanting to pursue that passion? And right now they're at the point of that, that they're kind of like, uh, I, I don't know if I should pursue it or not. Um, I just my my advice for that is don't don't quit. You know, um, I would rather and and I tell again I tell the kids that I coach I I'd rather know that that I tried and it didn't work out than to sit back and be like, well, I could have been that. I mm -hmm. could have done that. Um, you know, you can't be afraid to make mistakes. You can't be afraid to to fail. Um, and I've failed a lot. You know, and and I've learned. Okay, I can do this. I can't do that. Uh, and I, you know, if you have a passion for it, go for it. Like, why, why have a passion for something and constantly just wonder? Oh, I wonder what would have happened if I, if I pursued it a little bit more, if I tried a little bit harder. You know? Absolutely. So once again, Tim, I do want to thank you so much for being on the podcast. But before we go, my final question being: After everything that you have done thus far and stuff that you're going to go do in the future, are you proud of your story? Uh, up to the, up to where I'm at, yeah, uh, I am. Um, it's not finished. But um, you know, up to up to right now, then yeah, I'm proud of of everything that that I've I've been able to do. Well, thank you, Tim, so much. Where can the people find you on social media? Um, you can find me on Instagram at tbrandon84. Um, YouTube, just look up True That Productions. Um, and uh, and you know, Facebook, just Timothy Ray Brandon. You know, IMDb. That's the same name too. And just find me. I've got stuff all over the place. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning into your story. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. I'm not good at that. Um, and if you are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, make sure you guys go subscribe as well. And thank you so much, Brandon. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again in the future. Awesome. Thank you.